Well, good morning. We're happy to have you with us, joining us online today. Happy Mother's Day to all those mothers or mother type figures that are joining us this morning. We are so thankful for you, and I hope that you are appreciated and made to feel special this morning. Husbands and kids, if you have forgotten that today is Mother's Day, this is your reminder right now, you still have time to go and make a card. You're welcome. It's funny, I was looking through my notes for Mother's Day two years ago when I spoke, and I started off by saying, I'm not a mother, but I have what I still like to call my fur baby, Remy. Two years later, I have a lot to be thankful for this Mother's Day. I still have my fur baby, which I will always call my fur baby, Remy, who I love dearly, but I get to celebrate being a mother to a human baby that is still on the way. Now, this still does not give me much insight yet for you this morning, as I feel like I'll be developing that over the next 18 years of my life and my child's life, but regardless, here we are. So hopefully I have something encouraging for you mothers this morning. I read a Mother's Day story online from a pastor in the South, and the story said this. One of the mothers in our church put her son to bed on the eve of his fifth birthday. She was trying to communicate the birthday idea to him. Kevin, she said, this is the last night of your fourth year. Do you understand that? Kevin was ready to communicate with his hands. For a full year, he had shown people four fingers for his four years, and now he was ready to add a thumb. Seeing his four fingers, his mother nodded and said, when you go to sleep tonight, you'll still be four years old. But do you know how, how old you'll be in the morning when you wake up? And Kevin nodded enthusiastically, added his thumb to his four little fingers and said, tomorrow I will be a handful. For all mothers who have had their hands full, we celebrate Mother's Day today. Regardless of what age your child is, mothers do have their hands full. We are so thankful for our spouses and family who step up to the plate to partner alongside us, but motherhood is a big task. I find myself up at night thinking about the big task that Kyle and I have ahead of ourselves. Mothers, are you feeling overwhelmed today, exhausted and in a dry season of your life? I want to give you some encouragement and some strength this morning. My sermon in a sentence is this, all mothers have been called by God to live a purpose-filled life. Each of you as mothers has been called by God to be the mother of your child or your children. It's easy to feel overwhelmed, unsure, and uncertain, but to walk with consistent confidence, knowing and believing that God has called you to fulfill this mission of motherhood, that is the difficult task. So I want to encourage you this morning to walk with confidence, knowing that you are a mother called by God, full of purpose, direction, and meaning. So as we look to God's word this morning, we are going to take a look at history's most famous mother. And no, I am not talking about Carol Brady from the Brady Bunch. I am talking about Mary, Jesus's mother, a woman who is called by God to take on an unimaginable task. So my first point for you this morning is this. A mother called by God submits to his will. A mother called by God submits to his will. Now, who would have thought that on Mother's Day, I would be talking about Christmas? But I can't help it. I know that Christmas is still 229 days away. And yes, I'm counting because I'm the kind of person that does that. And I can't resist it. But jumping to the Christmas story is necessary when looking at our leading lady. It's where the beautiful story of Mary beginning to enter into motherhood truly began. So when Mary was only a teenager, she was faced with a challenge to be completely submitted to God's will, even when an unimaginable task was facing her. 
When Gabriel gave her the message that she was to carry the Christ child, Mary was stunned. And I imagine that most of us would have felt the same way. But Mary's response as just a young teenager was one of the most shocking parts when we look at the scripture. And we're just gonna go to God's word from Luke 1, verse 30 to 38. And it says this, But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she, who is said to be unable to conceive, is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. And then the angel left her. So the key verse in this is verse 38. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be be fulfilled. And then the angel left her. Could you imagine that being told as a teenager that you would carry the son of God? Now, many would take that message and run saying that they were not up to the task, but Mary was a mother called by God. And for that, she didn't let her complete submission waver. Was she nervous? Certainly. Was she unsure of her own abilities? Who wouldn't be? How many of you this morning are being called to obedience to God's will in some way, but you're too nervous and unsure of your own abilities? The best thing is about, about when God calls the unequipped is that he equips us. You may be unsure of your own abilities, but how sure are you of God's ability to work in your life, to work in your spouse's life, and to work in you, through your family's life as well? Mary was a little like the mother who sits up late at night, far past her bedtime, waiting for her child to get home. Mary was like the father who says a silent prayer as he watches his child pull out of the driveway for the first time with their license. Mary was like any parent watching this morning who wanted only the best, only the most protection for her child and fully aware that life happens but not all life is pleasant. But Mary was unlike a lot of parents in the world today. Mary, first of all, was completely submitted to God. Regardless of what God's will would have for her precious child, she knew her son, the son of God, would face hardships and trials and pain. But she was so committed to God that she had no room for commitment to anything else. And that made her a mother worth imitating. She submitted herself regardless to God's will, regardless of what was to come, regardless of what she was to face or what her child was to face. So mothers, are you submitting yourselves into God's will this morning? Are you trusting him with your families, with your children, with your grandchildren? Or are you taking things into your own hands? Is he calling you into something new, but you are unsure of your abilities, just like Mary was, and hesitating to take the plunge with God, not knowing what the deeper waters will hold for you as a wife, as a mother, or simply just a woman? Let me tell you this, and I mean it to encourage and strengthen, not to tear down or discourage. You are a mother called by God, and he wouldn't ask you to do something that would result in destruction. You may be uncomfortable or uncertain, but trust in him. Have trust like Mary and choose to submit yourself and your families to his will. You will not be disappointed, but it may not be easy to give into his plans. 
But a mother called by God submits to his will, and that is his pleasing and perfect will. The big picture might not turn out exactly the way that you imagined it, but I promise you it's going to be much more fulfilling to follow God's will for your life than to follow your own will and your own plan for your families. Now, I can't go through Mother's Day without talking about my own mom. I talked about her last time I spoke on Mother's Day, and some of you had met her and heard her speak when she spoke at our women's Christmas event this year. She is, to not overstate it, is very simply just an amazing woman. She is everything that I hope to become as a godly mother as I start this next chapter in my life. She is loving, she listens, she's always there when I needed her, but always gave me the push to be independent as well. My mom and I had a lot of good moments. And in fact, when I sat down and looked back on my relationship with my mom, I thought that it was nearly perfect. But not every mother or moment or father or parents in general can be perfect. Even my own mom, no parent can be perfect. So to give you an example of my mom's imperfection, even though I love her, when I was younger, I can't remember the exact age, maybe seven or eight years old, my mom and I went grocery shopping together, a regular occurrence for us. It was a mother-daughter thing that we did. My dad stayed home with the boys. It was our special time. And during our shopping trips together, my mom would always take me to the toy aisle as most children do. So I could walk through examining every single toy on the shelf. If some of you know me very well, you may be able to tell that I am very impatient and I'm very persistent. And my husband can attest to that. And during my childhood, these qualities of mine that I had, I'd say were even more amplified than what they were. So imagine just seven-year-old Katie, very impatient, very persistent. And that just was who I was. So we got to the store, I remember, and I begged my mom to take me to the toy aisle immediately. I said, mom, please, I don't want to shop. Just take me to the toy aisle. Just leave me there and I will look at all the toys while you shop. That way you don't have to wait for me while I'm looking at the toys at the end of the shopping trip. Just take me there. So I promised her that I would stay in the aisle. And with that, she agreed. I remember her taking me to the aisle and she said, Katie, you have to stay right here. I'll only be two aisles over, but I will come back for you. So do not move. And I assured her that I would not move and she could count on me. Well, as I said before, I am a very impatient person and I was a very impatient child. And after I had perused the toy aisle for what seemed like 20 minutes to me, but in reality was probably no more than two minutes, I got bored and I got antsy and I got impatient. And what did I do? Regardless of my promise, I left the aisle so I could go and find my mother. So I went two aisles over and this direction and there was no mom. And then I went two aisles over and the other direction and there was still no mom. So then I started to panic. I started running around the store, yelling for my mom's name, looking for her everywhere. I'm pretty sure it was a big store because I couldn't find her. And then I ran into an employee who asked if I was lost. If you also know me, I'm an emotional person. When I was a kid, it was a lot worse. So as soon as they asked me if I was lost, I broke down in tears saying that my mother left me and I can't find her anywhere. So the, the grocery store person grabbed my hand and walked me to the front desk. And then over the PA system, they said in the microphone, Galen Wilson, please come to the front desk to retrieve your lost child. I see my mom coming in, looking very unimpressed, looking very red. She took the walk of shame to come and get me. And she was very upset with me because I broke my promise. But looking back on this story, I see that this is a lot more my fault than hers. But needless to say, she never left me in the toy aisle again. 
She would classify this as a major mom fail moment. My perfect mother definitely had some non-perfect moments as all parents do. And that leads me to the big sigh of relief second point I have for you this morning. My second point is a mother called by God does not have to be perfect. <sighs> Doesn't that just feel good to say? A mother called by God does not have to be perfect. This is great news for all of us. Just because you are a mother called by God does not mean that you have to be perfect. No one is. But so many mothers put that pressure on themselves that they can't take a moment to bask in the imperfections that make up their beautiful lives, their beautiful stories, and their beautiful families. So I want you to take a breath, women, wherever you are this morning and say, I do not have to be perfect. Go ahead and do it. And now husbands and kids, I want you to turn to your wives and your mothers and say, you do not have to be perfect even though I already think you are scoring you some brownie points this morning. So I think that most women look at Mary as the mother of mothers, a mother that was simply perfect and without any fault. But we know that no one other than Jesus was perfect. Despite the fact that she was the mother of Jesus, Mary wasn't perfect. When Jesus performed his first miracle, Mary's conversation is the most tense part of this water turned into wine story. So we're gonna be looking in John 2, verse one to four, and it says this. On the third day, a wedding took place at Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, they have no more wine. Woman, why do you involve me? Jesus replied. My hour has not yet come. Jesus said to Mary, his own mother, woman, why do you involve me? It's not my time. So two things. First, a word to the children and my youth students watching this morning. Do not by any means call your mother woman. It will not go over well for you. This is dangerous. I always say imitate Jesus, but don't call your mother woman. Husbands, don't call your wives woman. It's just not going to end well for you. Second, think of the awkwardness of this conversation. Mothers, I want you to think back to a time. Have you ever asked your child to do something and they replied in the not nicest tone or with a little more sass or back talk than expected. I am sure you have all had that moment many times. I'm sure you're maybe going to get some of those moments today, but I hope not because it's Mother's Day. But you will have these moments many more times in your life. That's how I picture this conversation going. But Jesus was in the right. He knew when his time was. But I can't imagine Jesus replying very kindly, woman, why do you involve me in this matter? No, I hear it a little more like this. Woman, why do you involve me? Mary's conversation with Jesus appears to be out of line with what Jesus was ready to do. Though Jesus performed the miracle, making it his first, he made it clear to his mother from the beginning that it was not his time and he wasn't impressed by it. If that's not an indication of Mary's imperfection, a second example is Matthew 12, verse 46 to 50. It says, while Jesus was still talking to the crowd, his mother and his brothers stood outside wanting to speak to him. Someone told him, your mother and your brothers are standing outside wanting to speak to you. He replied to him, who is my mother and who are my brothers? Pointing to his disciples, he said, here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of my father in heaven is my brother and my sister and my mother. If Mary had understood what Jesus was trying to accomplish, would she have tried to interrupt him? Stopping the ministry of Jesus, even for a little while, to visit his mother and his brothers, that was a mistake on Mary's part. 
You've made mistakes in the past. You'll certainly make a mistake or two today and you'll make mistakes tomorrow. But through it all, God will love you. He will work with you and he will accept you. And you know what? Your family will too, because you are a mother called by God. You are not a mother called by God to perfection. And I don't say all this to make a point that Mary wasn't a great mother. Mary was a fantastic mother that loved her son deeply, but no mother can have an entire life of perfection. But the beauty is your good moments as a mother outweigh the bad moments. Mary isn't recognized for everything she did wrong. She's remembered for everything she did right, for choosing, for saying yes to the Lord, for saying, yes, I will carry the son of God. She is remembered for the good things, not for the mistakes. And the same will be for you. To find an imperfect moment of my own mother's, I had to ask multiple members of my family if they could remember anything because I couldn't remember anything bad. The same is true for each of you today. You may feel in the moment that you've messed up, that you've aimed for perfection and had a major mom fail. But a mother called by God is not called to perfection. She is called to motherhood, which is so far from perfect. It's messy and it's perfectly imperfect. And all of those beautiful imperfections is what makes your family yours. God stands by you with it. You are called as a mother by God, but you are not called to be, perf- to be perfect. D.L. Moody used to tell the story of a man who came to him and said, when the Mexican war began, I wanted to enlist. My mother, seeing I was resolved, said if I become a Christian, I might go. She pleaded and prayed that I might become a Christian, but I wouldn't. I said when the war was over, I would become a Christian, but not till then. All her pleading was in vain, and at last when I was going away, she took out a watch and said, My son, your father left this to me when he died. Take it. And I want you to remember that every day at 12 o'clock, your mother will be praying for you. Then she gave me her Bible and marked out passages and put a few different references in the fly leaf. I took the watch and the Bible just because my mother gave them and I never intended to read the Bible. I went off to Mexico and one day while on a long weary march, I took out my watch and it was 12 o'clock. I had been gone for four months, but I remembered that my mother at that hour was praying for me. Something prompted me to ask the officer to relieve me for a little while. And I stepped behind a tree away out on those plains of Mexico and cried to the God of my mother to save me. God saved him. And after that Mexican war was ended, he said, I have enlisted again to see if I can do any good for my master's cause. And this leads me to my last point for you this morning. A mother called by God never lets go of her title. A mother never lets go of her title. This woman we just read about had prayed and prayed for her son to come to the Lord. And literally word for word, it says that all her pleading was in vain. He turned her down time and time again, but a mother never gives up on her child. A mother never gives up her God-given title and a mother never stops showing love to her child. Just because motherhood isn't as easy as expected doesn't mean that she was going to give up. This mother's prayer for her child persisted. She never lost hope, never stopped showing a mother's love for her son, and God saw her through. In Mary's story, this is where we jump to the end. You saw in our first point, we started at Christmas, the beginning of Jesus' life where Mary gave birth to the Savior. But to her, this was her baby. Now for our last point, we jump to the end. The crucifixion where scripture tells us that Mary stood by at the end of Jesus's life, still his mother. John 19 verse 25, it says, near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas and Mary Magdalene. 
Mary didn't stand passively at the foot of the cross. She didn't run, she didn't hide, not being able to bear watching her child die on the cross. She was there, she stood by and she crumpled at the cross. The cross surely cut deep into Mary's heart. No mother wants to see their child gone before them. But despite the pain, however, Mary was there. She was a mother from the beginning and she was a mother until the end. A mother called by God never lets go of her title. And regardless of how her son went out in the crucifixion, she still stood by as his mother, thanking the Lord that her son obeyed the father's will. You'll find mothers like that in halls of children's hospitals, in funeral homes, in counseling offices, or praying in the church pews. Mothers never let go of the title that they've been given to by God. Even if the child is rebellious, harsh, or cruel, her heart will just not allow it. Not when she is called by God. Mothers called by God do not give up on their children. There may be tough love, there may be impossible nights, but God stands by and he supports you through it all. When a woman becomes a mother, when a man becomes a father, there is an instant realization that the day will almost certainly come when pain will come into the picture. The pain is different for every family, but it usually comes. And like I said, there may be tough love and impossible nights, but God's gonna stand by and support you, but don't give up on that title. Through it all, mothers called by God will never let the title go, never. And it's because there is simply nothing like a mother's love. Are you feeling discouraged this morning? Are you feeling tired of chasing after your lost or rebellious child? God sees your heart. He knows your greatest desires. Don't give up. Don't lose hope. Don't surrender that title that you have been so abundantly blessed with. Keep wearing that title proudly. Keep being there for your child. Keep loving on your families and be the mother that God has called you to be. A mother called by God never lets go of her title. Keep believing, keep praying, trust in the Lord. He sees you. And I have one more story this morning with which I'll conclude. A missions director once met with the mother of one of his agency's missionaries and spent some time getting to know her. She prepared tea for the director in her parlor, and as they drank the tea, she explained to him the difficulty of having a daughter in the mission field of China and a son as a missionary in Sudan. She loved and missed them dearly, but as she explained, her love for God allowed her to let them follow his will for their lives. The mother went on to describe the burden her son had for the Sudanese people. Her relay of his description of the people brought her to tears several times during the conversation. The missions director left her house with a deeper appreciation for parents of missionaries and a greater burden for the country of Sudan. A few months later, the missions director got word that a missionary in Sudan had been killed and that it was the Scottish lady's son. Feeling he should be the one to break the news to her, he once again visited the mother in her home. After telling her the tragic news, the mother looked down, and in a few moments of composure, she said, Sir, I would rather have my son die in the middle of Sudan alone than to have him living here with me, disobeying God's will. This story is a perfect example of a mother called by God. As much as it hurt to let her children go, she completely submitted herself to God's will by pushing her children to follow God's will and plan for their lives. It's easy to force your own will on your children. You wanna do what you can to protect them, to keep them safe. But I promise you, it is much more fulfilling to submit to God's will for your life, to push your family to do the same, to submit to God's will, regardless of what it will hold. God has so much more in store than we can even dream up as parents. 
This mother, she wasn't perfect as no mother can be. It didn't mean that she didn't hurt for her children being gone, but she trusted his plan. And at the end of her son's life, she never let go of her title. She never gave up because she was too consumed with worry or fear for her son's life. She was his mother at the beginning and a mother till the end, still cheering her son on for obeying God's will. Regardless of what the ending of what happened, she still thanked the Lord that her son followed and obeyed God's will. She was truly a mother called by God. A mother called by God can walk with confidence knowing that she is called to a life filled with beauty, with purpose, and a sense of direction with God leading her on. You are called by God to something greater, but a mother called by God must be willing to submit to his will or how are you ever gonna get to the greater that he has for you? It may not be easy submitting to his way, but it will be so much more fulfilling submitting to his will than trying to make up your own. Be encouraged. A mother called by God does not have to be perfect. Mothers, embrace those imperfections that will give you memories that will last a lifetime. Move on from them, learn from them, and trust that the Lord is standing with you. Those beautiful imperfections make up your family. Embrace it. And no matter what, a mother called by God never lets go of her title. A mother's love does not give up no matter what stage of life your children are in, whether you're in the baby years, the teenage years, or the full-blown adult and you're getting ready to have grandchildren, you will always hold the title of a mother. So don't give up on your kids. Don't think that they're too far gone. Don't give up. Continue to love on your families and treasure that title that God has blessed you with. So my question for you this morning is, are you submitting to his will this morning? Are you spending way too much time focusing on perfection that you're missing out on the beauty moments of your family? And are you proudly bearing your God-given title today and every day? Not just today because it's Mother's Day, but are you proudly bearing that title and living it out every single day? Proverbs 31, verse 28 to 29 says, Her children arise and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. What can be more noble than living out the fact that you are a mother called by God? Look to Mary for encouragement this morning. Wear your titles with pride this morning. You are a mother called by God with a specific purpose and a specific plan for you and your families. We appreciate you and we honor you this morning, mothers. And we thank you for the sacrificial love and for the hero work that you are doing each and every day. And with that, we're just gonna pray. So God, I just thank you this morning for the blessing of mothers. God, we thank you for their love. We thank you for their kindness and their joy. Lord, we thank you for placing each mother in our lives and in their families with you thinking of them in mind. God, we just pray that our mothers would be built up this morning. God, that they would feel confident knowing that they are a mother called by God to a purpose-filled life. God, you have so much in store for them and their families. And Lord, we just pray that you would lift them up, that you would bless them, and that you would strengthen them as they continue this hard road of motherhood. Lord, we just thank you for your mother, Mary. We thank you for the wonderful example that she gives us. And Lord, I just pray that we would think of Mary as we're approaching these next days, that we would look to her, we look to the Bible, that we would look to you for encouragement. We just thank you, Lord, for all that you are and all that you are doing. And we just pray that you would have your hands on our families. We thank you, Lord, for the sacrifice that you made for us. And we just pray that we would all be able to come back together soon and safely. 
We ask all these things in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, happy Mother's Day. We hope you have a wonderful afternoon with your family. I hope that you feel appreciated and loved this morning.